So, you know, the other day I talked about the TAC, the Teams Admin Center. And again, we're here, right? So I log in to portal.office.com, right? So I'm logged in as, as my user, right? I go to the admin page, which brings this up. Then I can, I've got um, my Teams Admin Center pinned so I can see that. Of course, that takes me to here, which we're all familiar with. And we scroll all the way down and we've got this thing called usage reports. All right. So these are your basic reports that were included in Teams. Um, most are, excuse me, a good part of them deal with calling plan. Uh, so if you're using direct routing or uh, operator connect, you're not going to get much information here. Um, and let's and just to be clear, um, I'm not breaking down these reports today. What I'm doing is pointing them out and showing you how to gather the data and, and how to manipulate some of it um, so that you can then create offerings because right these are partners you guys are all partners so that you can create offerings to help your customers pull the data they need to more properly monitor detect um, administer and 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 um, and bill if they're doing back billing for the types of calls and activity that's going on in teams so let's get into it so scroll down to analytics and reports and we've got our usage reports, all right? So we've got a few reports here to choose from. Now they've added a bunch. Um, used to be just a few. Uh, something I wanna call out, this PSTN minutes and SMS preview pool. Um, you know, SMS is, is rather elusive when it comes to Teams. Um, we've done things with um, Azure Cloud Services, or Azure Communication Services, to allow you, our partners, to create SMS offerings. Um, I personally have not heard of anything from the SMS standpoint coming from Microsoft directly. And I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but the, it's in there. They show it in preview. Okay. Um, so you can run reports like app usage. I don't know that I have any apps in my tenant, so I'm probably not going to do that, but let's, um, I know I have Teams devices, so let's take a look at that. We'll select a date range. Let's say the last seven days, and we'll just run this report and see what it, see what it looks like. So I've got a little bit, of usage there and it breaks it down um, by type, right? So I've got a couple of different Windows things going on. So I've got a couple of Windows clients. I've got an Android client there. Um, it would show things if people are joining from the Linux client, Chrome, iOS, web, Mac. All right, so this just kind of gives you an idea of the types of devices that are connecting, right? And if we, there's no, there's no real drill down here. It just tells you the last activity um, date. So that's, that's one report. Um, we've got some other reports here we could dive into. Let's try user activity again for the last seven days. I'll run that report. See what it generates for us. So, yeah, we've got a little bit of user activity, as you can see, right? So a um, bunch of one-to-one -one calls on September 11th that I made. Some other things going on there, right? Some audio minutes, screen sharing minutes, you know, total meetings participated in. So kind of neat stuff. These, um, it's gonna let me drill down into these. No, there's nothing to drill down into there. Just some metrics that you can that you can see. So again, just trying to show you some of the possible possible um, reports that you can grab. Um, you know, if you have that kind of stuff. Again, these PSTN ones are if you have uh, Microsoft calling plans. Um, from a labeling standpoint, um, this is interesting, right? So they're the labels are used to give IP subnet names so that uh, when you upload the data, right, it can then be applied moving forward to your reporting. OK, so there's a there's a CSV file. Now you can do it here, um, but, but then there's also one other place where you can do that as well. And, and, and that's what we're going to jump into next. All right, so we've got this thing called the call quality. Oh, wait, sorry. I was going to do one more thing. I just realized um, from an analytics standpoint. Now this is the. Um, this is the area where you're going to drill down. Into a particular user, OK, call the CQD or call quality dashboard is a historical reporting engine. All right. Um, so if you have a user that calls and says, hey, I'm really having some problems. Then you can come to the user portion, manage the user, 
and dive into the particular user. Now, I know I've been making a bunch of calls as administrator, and sure enough, I've got seven calls in my seven-day activity. And it says, for the most part, they were all good. And that's great. Um, but let's dive into those, right? So to do that, you need to go to meetings and calling. And why doesn't it want us? Uh, doesn't want to show us any call. Oh, there we go. Sorry, what was that? Oh, that was meetings. Okay, here we go. So it shows our my calls, you know. And if I scroll this way, right, it will show me if it was good or poor. Now all of them were good because they were pretty much peer to peer on my local area network. But let's just drill into one of them. Click on that. And now we've got three areas here in which we can deal with troubleshooting or looking at this call. We've got an overview, which just kind of gives you some basic information. We've got advanced, which will show you both sides of the call and some extra information. We'll get into that. And then, of course, the debug information, which takes us a lot deeper. And again, we'll, we'll get into that. And then, of course, you can export it uh, to a spreadsheet and you'll get 211 lines of metrics that you can then pour through should you choose to if you're if you're one of those people that likes to do that now if in the event that this call went south for some reason right it's it came back and said nope this was a poor call one of these icons would light up red okay and that would be to let you know that that is the area in which the call started to have problems. Now, usually it falls under the network, right? So usually it's the network that starts to go bad. So you'll notice when I clicked on network, it gives us the information from admin to, uh, that happened to be my cell phone, and from my cell phone to admin. So when we think about network and what makes a uh, call good or bad, it's going to be um, delay, jitter, and packet loss. Now, if you don't know what what we're talking about delay meaning the time that it takes to get the information there in other words the, the, the packets are time stamped we know how long it takes to get there and back um so we're looking at an average round trip of 89 milliseconds as long as that's under 150 we're in great shape okay so and even the maximum round trip time was only 92 milliseconds so so far um we're in good shape, all right? It gave us a degradation MOS score. So MOS scores, usually the higher number is better, but we're talking about the degradation. So there was no degradation. And uh, latency issues, Patrick, deal with delay, right? So that's what we're talking about. Um, and now jitter, jitter is defined as the amount of time between packets. So um, if packet A and B, or let's say packets one and two showed up, one millisecond apart, but packets between packets two and three, it was like maybe eight milliseconds. And then and then again, um, between packets three and four was eight milliseconds. You know, uh, Jitter would respond by saying, hey, we're seeing inner packet delay of X, right? In this case, one to two milliseconds, which is excellent, right? Anything under 20. And then in this case, again, it was on my local area network, so was, as Indranil ta taught us the other day, it was a peer-to-peer -peer call, did not leave my network, okay? No packet loss, right? And I wouldn't expect packet loss on my own internal network. And then, again, it was from my cell phone. So, again, very low round-trip times on these, all right? There was no desktop sharing. There was no... Um, stream coming from either one. It was just an audio call. So that call looks actually pretty good. All right. So we could check the device if we wanted to. Um, and unfortunately, it's the default. Okay. So in this case, the default input device, um, which is the microphone and speaker on mine, gives us a little bit of system information. All right. So in this case, it was it was the audio code C450 IP phone that I have. Sorry about that. All right, so we know that that is an Android device and it tells us audio codes and then the hardware was actually the C450 HD. So we can tell by looking at this, the type of device that it was on the admin side, okay? 
And then from a connectivity standpoint, it's telling us our connection is Ethernet versus wireless, and that is true. My audio codes phone is plugged into my PoE switch. Again, we looked at our network times already. Now we can go over to the far end, right? So it's saying my phone was connected via Ethernet, which is not true. So this is not going to be the best information, probably isn't any information available because, again, it was my cell phone and no information available, again, because it was my cell phone. All right, and I think the reason they said Ethernet here is because um, it entered um, via my router. So I believe that's what they're talking about there. And then, of course, I could export that report. Now, from an advanced standpoint, let's see what we get here. All right. Again, admin default, default device, default device, nothing entered there. All right. So we get our audio stream information. We get our, again, our operating system in the device. Network connectivity was Ethernet. And then we get some of the more, we get some of the packet information again, right? Compressed samples. Here's the codex that we had been talking about all week long, right? So silk wideband on, on the output of my phone. Um, it, however, it came in uh, PCMU, right? So there was a transcoding done somewhere in there. Um, our sample rates. And again, the jitter payload again. So those are some of the things. So these are very helpful information. This is very helpful information when you're troubleshooting these calls. And it doesn't have to necessarily be like a phone to phone call, it could be a device call. I wonder if I can find, I don't know if I ever took a call from the hard client. Uh, we're not gonna spend a lot of time in there. I just really wanted to show you what kind of information you can get. Now, when I go to debug, we're gonna get a lot of information. This would be more for um, our support that they could dive down into this kind of stuff, right? So call duration, it was bi-directional. Uh, let's see if there's some any, some other things that I can show you in here. The call failed. If the call failed after call setup, yes, but not if it failed before call setup. There's you'll see those in a different area. So if you're seeing a lot of call failures, then there's something you want to drill down into. Just rolling through here. So a lot of this stuff again is deep debugging stuff for the engineers should they need to dive into one of these calls. Um, the media path, interesting, host UDP, stun UDP. So again, our media path, as Indranil was talking to us about, was not TCP, but UDP. So this address is the address of Teams. This address, I believe that, that looks like my, yeah, that looks like my um, my home router. So that's my public address. As we scroll through here, there's some information about the report itself. So there is some useful information in here. Um, not a lot that we're going to deal with on a regular basis, but just look at all the different metrics. Okay, so. Here we have the actual internal address of that IP phone. Again, here's my external address. All right, so there's a little bit of PII in here. And then this is Teams. So, um, you know, be careful who sees this kind of stuff. But lots of lots of metrics in there. So 211 of them to be exact. So this is the kind of stuff that you guys can drill down into. Not that you're going to drill down into all of these, but this is where, as a partner, You'll want to be privy to this information so you can actually help your customer better understand where these problems were coming from. And, and to be perfectly honest, most of the time, the problem is going to be here. Okay, it's going to be in the network, and it'll it'll what will happen is if say round trip time was outside of the parameters, this would be highlighted in red, or if jitter was really really bad, this would be highlighted in red. OK, you can say, listen, it was just a network connectivity problem. Or if you were having audio issues, you might actually see. You know, some some uh, the, the, say the device going bad. Um, if it was a headset, maybe the headset battery was running out or you were too far from a Bluetooth standpoint away and the, and the packets were being dropped on the Bluetooth side. 
because the team certified devices do send metrics to teams to tell them about the user experience. And that's how it gets that information and can then report on it. So that is the analytic part, the, the drill down part. Now, you can export the report, right? So you notice it did it right away. So we can just open that real quick. So you get an idea of what that looks like. All right, and again, there they are. They're all in there. So again, some PII, so be careful, right? So there's my, there's the user, okay? Date and time, phone number that I called from, et cetera. But as we scroll down, you can see I wasn't lying. It is 211 each, uh, pieces of information. Um, again, some may, may be populated, some may not, but um, might be something to capture to, to to dive in to say you might do a pivot table or something like that. Um, we don't need to look at that any further. And I'm not doing that right now. So again, under manage users. So actually here, you know what? Let's do this. Let's just do one more, All right? So we're going to go back up to manage users. Pick one other account. Take a quick look at it. There it is. Now this one I know for sure has got a problem. So it, it's a problem in my tenant I haven't fixed, but um, for some reason I, I can get missed calls. I can't make or receive calls. So what it's showing me is 17 unknown calls. So let's see if we can find one of those. So you see here, that was a three-party conference call that we did this morning. Let's see if I can find one that it didn't like. Yeah, so let's go with an unknown. Oops, sorry about that. This one, yeah, zero seconds. So let's let's see if this one gives us any information now because the call, yeah, there's no data available, right? System, oh, it did tell us, okay. So I had the 450 logged in as as my as this user on that particular occasion, and see the call actually never set up, so um, there's no real information to be had there because the call just didn't it never connected. So it shows the call. I don't know if it'll show a response code or not. Probably not. Under the debug information, I wouldn't expect to see really anything. Here that tells me why the calls. I know why. I know why the calls aren't working, but because there was no call, you can see there's not that 211 pieces of metrics because the call never, the call actually never established. It ended up being a missed call. So that's what a missed call looks like. Um, we can take a quick look at a conference call. Let's go back. There was that conference call from this morning. Let's see what that looked like. There we go. Open that up. All right, so a little bit different um, from a reporting standpoint, right? Because it's now a conference call we're looking at, All right? So it says the media quality was good. There were three participants that lasted 11 minutes, All right? Here's our timeline. These are the individuals that were part of that call and, and for how long, that's very interesting. All right, gives us some participant details, All right? So it said our app sharing and audio was all good. So a little bit interesting for a three way call. You don't get quite as much information, but you do you know, get to see enough of it. So if somebody says, hey, I had a conference call go bad, you could look here and, and drill down into that just a little bit. So interesting stuff that you can get there. So again, this would be the second area where you could get information, uh, historical information. Um, this one very detailed, very specific to a user where your user reports um, are more about trends. And that takes us to our next part, which is going to be historical data via the call quality dashboard. Now I'm already actually logged into my call quality dashboard. So you would click that and it would bring up this and it would look like this when you first do it. Okay. Now, the most important part of the call quality dashboard is the upload. And many of you are going like, what? What are you talking about upload? If you didn't know, you have the ability to upload subnets and building information 
so that these reports will actually tell you where the calls are coming from and if they're going bad. So you'll actually see now my building data doesn't is not um, accurate, so we're not really going to see anything from a building specific standpoint. But if you had populated a bunch of buildings with different subnets, that would all show up here. Now, how do we do that? Well, the first thing we got to do is we've got to go to go here. Yes. So we click on the cog, we go to tenant data upload, right? And it says, what, what file type are we? Is it going to be a building or an endpoint file type? That's new. It used to only be building, but now you can upload endpoints as well. You can then choose the file and the date that it applies to. And you can see I have one in here. It's building data and it's been processed. Now, what does that look like? Well, we offer a template, which can be found here. I'm pasting that in the chat. OK, and the template file is here as well. OK, and that's here. All right. And basically what that gives you is a CSV with no. With no header. Line on it, right? So if you want to look up what the columns are, you got to find it here, right? So we've got 15 columns here. So this is column one, two, three, four, all the way down to 15. So we've got our our uh, our subnet address our network name if we chose to give well we have to give it one so that's the other thing you have to populate all 15 of these uh, areas otherwise the upload will fail okay our network range so if it's a if it's a typical class c subnet that should actually be 24. um if now here's our building name the ownership type is simply you know i, I know these say optional but they're actually required unless they changed it it used to be they were all required um, but I recommend populating all these fields with something, okay? Right, Ash, thank you. Don't add the header, and then we'll show you that. So I'm not going to go through all of these, but these are all the different things. These are new, all right? Um, Inside Corp, Express Route, and VPN, if you're using those, right? So you'll want to populate that information. So yeah, here's a sample row, what that might look like, but here's the actual file itself, okay? So again, no header row. You just put in there it is those are my two subnets here at the here at my house at the home that i use for most of my home things and my lab okay uh, most of this is going to be the same except the fact that i've got a home and a lab all right and you just save that as a csv file so i do it's called home csv all right so we can minimize that all right but that is the website you'll go to that will give you the information on how to populate that and then it's simply Browse, right? So pick your pick your thing. I'm sorry, your file. Now it's there, and then upload will populate. Otherwise, if you hadn't done that, upload would not populate. Okay. Now, when you do that, the web page will change. This will show now two files, and it will say in process or processed, right? So while it's processing that, while it's parsing that information and sending it to your tenant CQD information, so that you'll be able to see it. Um, It'll say in process and once it's processed, then you can um, go take a look at it. Now, should you have lost that file or somebody else needs it, you do have the ability to download that file here as well. All right, so we'll head back to the dashboard. And we will start with our summary reports. So the whole idea behind CQD was historical data, both from an audio standpoint, but screen sharing and all that, and it's going to show you overlaid what your failure rates or what your poor call rates are. Now, I've seen this where it shows, like these are days of the week, by the way. So this is September of 2022. This is August of 2022. And what I've seen in a lot of cases is you'll have these high numbers and then you'll have two days of nothing, and then high numbers and then two days of nothing. And, and actually what would happen sometimes because this is, is you would see this line, which is your poor call line, jump up on the weekends because the percentages are greater the fewer the calls, right? So this is a percentage, right? So 0%, 0.2%, 0.4, 0.6. So what was happening was if you have 100 calls and 10 go bad, that's 10%, right? But if you have five calls and two go bad, right, your percentage is a lot higher. So what would happen, what we were seeing was 
this would stay low. And then on weekends, when the call volume went low, this would jump up. But it was just a percentage thing. And you just had to pay attention to that. So these are all calls, right? I had two good calls that day, two good calls that day, two good calls that way that day. And again, most of my testing comes from the fact that I'm doing it on my local area network. So I don't expect to see poor calls, but these unclassified calls. So on the 11th, you recall, I was making a lot of calls, 16 unclassified. Those were the ones where my call set up, where my call set up established, but the call actually didn't get answered. It, the call itself failed. And because there was no actual, because the call didn't connect, there's no metrics to classify that call. OK, so you start seeing a bunch of these and you're going to want to start looking into why you're seeing these unclassified calls, right? So for the entire, so this one has the monthly trend, right? So you've got March, April, May, June, July, August, September. I've done a few calls here and there uh, through through testing, right? 60 unclassified calls. I must have been doing a lot of work in my lab that, that month, right? Um, here I just made some really good test calls, all right? So it's historical data. And the key thing here is this side here, sorry, this area here will scale based on the percentage. So if your percentage goes above 1%, this scale will automatically change, all right? To say this might be one, two, three, four, five, what have you. And this scale will automatically change as well based on the call volume. All right, I have to be honest, I don't under, quite understand the whole server client um, relationship here um but it just again it, it just goes back to it's a trend that if you start to see things go south you're going to want to look into from a daily trend um the last seven days or so or what's this the last 15 days um, it just drills down a little bit more so you can see kind of where things were going so on the 11th we saw that um client to client information you could see here it looks like our client to client calls are relatively good all right um so that's that's the summary, the overall quality. So this one is really what you want to look at, the daily trend. You sh this is where you'll start and you go, oh, we're, we're having some problems there. All right. I honestly, to be perfectly honest, this server to client, client to client stuff, I don't fully understand what um, what they're showing, what metrics they're showing. So I'm not going to I'm not going to bore you with it and try and guess. Even the voice quality SLA, I don't fully understand what they're trying to show there. So um, what I'd like to do now is take and move on to some of the canned summary reports that you can have. So let's go with, um, let's go with a client version report and see what we find here. So this will tell you what client versions uh, you have out there. So um, you know, if you're trying to track to make sure all your clients are up to date, this is where you'll want to come. You'll be able to see the different client app versions. Now, there is a question. Can you track real-time client activity users via this, especially in case of bulk wallet? No. So this is not real-time data, okay? Um, we have APIs for you to track real-time data, all right? And that's done through graph, and we weren't really going to necessarily cover that in this case. Um, but I will offer that if you want to reach out to me, I can provide you with the graph data. Uh, and we do um, have partners that do have real-time data collection. So we're we're at the point where it's near real-time for the calling APIs, uh, but that's all done through graph. All right, so we can see here, we do have a couple of different clients out there. All right, um, if you see a bunch of Microsoft Teams Windows client versions, out there and these numbers start to get smaller, then you're, you're gonna wanna find out who those are, right? So you can click on them. It'll tell you the username of the person and the call agent so that you can see, hey, we need to get this person updated. So this is definitely one you're gonna wanna keep an eye on uh, unless you have a policy not to allow, you know, previous clients to connect, right? Which I, a lot of, a lot of my partners and customers that I've seen do this will, will allow like one or two clients old and then block them after that uh, and then get out there and get them updated. All right. So this is again historical data. Now call quality dashboard has a little area that many people don't know about and they're called detailed reports. We give you a canned detail report. Okay. Again, it's all audio streams, right? 
Um, and this is it. You'd never want to mess with this because this is a good baseline to start with. So what you'd want to do is clone it. And when you do, it will clone exactly to this report right here. Now, this report looks drastically different, and I'll explain why. When we go into edit, we have these we have these fields. And Ash, if you could do me a, a favor, I know we publish what the dimensions and measurements are for CQD. If you could find that that uh, web page and post it in the chat, that would be excellent. Yeah, you got it. So these are um, these are the different metrics in which to build your chart, okay, or, or table, right? Right. You could turn this into a table if you wanted to, and then export it. I'm going to use a chart. All right. So our dimensions define how the information is displayed. The measurements are the actual fields, right? And then the filter simply says, hey, we're going to parse these by full month. OK, and, and that's how kind of how that works. So. It's a little weird, but my point is. From a standpoint of what you want to see. Or the category that you wish to see, you would add a dimension. So we have all these dimensions. That you can choose from. OK, and what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you kind of how that works. So, for example, if you're starting to see audio degradation or you want to see, you know, overall how your jitter is doing. You can actually click that, so we'll click that. And we'll see when we close this if we actually if it does anything. Oh, yeah. Right, so now we've got jitter in here and now that kind of goofs up our report a little bit, right? Because um, we added jitter as a dimension. Right, so probably don't want to do that. We may want to create a separate report for that, so we'll get rid of that. All right, but what I did here is I did choose. Now, let's see what happens if I get rid of month year. So if we click that. So now we get a lot less information, more of a, uh, so we're not getting those, that month information like we wanted to, even though the filter was full month. So let's go put that back in. Or maybe we tried for day. Let's go check that out first. So this is our endpoints. This is the building. Here's our deployment. Here's our stream. And here's our thing. So let's add day to that and close that. And let's see what that looks like. Yeah, so a little bit different information now, right? OK. Um, so we've got our subnet here, which. Is broke out, right? So this whole thing is for my 10 dot network, and this is for my lab network, right? Showing the different. Um, CDR streams available here. We've got total stream count there as well. OK, down here we've got. Two, two drop call stream count, because those are things that I looked for, right? I selected that color, that color, that color, right? Those are things you can do in here as well. So you can see by adding dimensions and adding measurements that it changes your report. Now, to get this report to look like this versus a bar, when you go into adding things, right? So let's try and add drop call failures, right? When you click that, you can rename it if you want. You can then say, I want a bar chart for that or a line chart, right? And then you can pick the color for that. And then once we close this, let's see what that does to our. So, so now what we've got is we've got that. Um, I did pick that, right? So we've got our total drop failure percentage now, even though it didn't show up here, um, that does show up. Uh, at four point, yeah, see, four point three five percent failure rate for that day, and it's a bar, right? We could have made it a line, right? So if I click that, we can go back and we can make that a line, all right? And we'll close this, and it'll update. So now it's a line. You can see here in the green. So there's a lot of ways you can customize this report, and there's so many measurements to choose from in here. So you guys can basically create your own reports. Right. And 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 I recommend that you get in there and you play around with this and see what it is. And oh, thank you, Ash. So Ash has just posted the document that explains all of these fields. Okay, and a little bit more information about how to deal with them. So again, this session is more about 
how to do this stuff, not necessarily what it is, because you're each of you are going to build these reports differently. OK, and this is stuff that you can do. And then, you know, help your customer out, say, OK, Mr. Customer, let's sit down and let's build you some some CQD reports so that they can keep track of the stuff that they're doing. All right. So this was really, really cool. And I wanted to show you guys that that's how you could do it. I highly recommend you play around with this. All right. That's it for CQD. OK, now I told you early on that there was one more special little thing I was going to add to this today, and I think you're really going to like it, and that is Power BI. OK. So many of you know. That you can pull all of this CQD data and have it imported into Power BI and create your own little reports. Now we've done a bunch here. OK, and we could zoom in on some of these if we really, if we really wanted to. So you can see them a little bit, a little bit better. So you can. That's how Power BI dashboard works. All right. So we'll crank that down. We'll come back to that. But here's the site, right? So this site here talks about how to use the Power BI templates that have been created, so that you can use Power BI to manipulate the call quality data. And, and I think a lot of people find this easier to use because a lot more people know how to use Power BI than do that, that little bit more clunky interface in CQD. All right. So this page calls out all the steps and what you should be doing when it comes to Power BI. OK, and then. It, it does give you the link. To the canned reports and the connector, so. The connector is the most important part of this. So when you do this, you actually get a zip file. OK, that goes into downloads, right? So here's my. CQD Power BI templates, I double click that and open that folder. All right, and you'll want to start with this document, which I happen to have open right here. OK, so this document is going to tell you. How to set up Power BI so that you can pull these reports. All right. So one of the things it tells you, and this is the most important part, is check to see if your computer already has this. So when you do Power BI desktop, you got to make sure that the custom connectors folder is there. So let's go check mine. So it's going to be under documents, Power BI desktop, and sure enough, custom connectors is there. And there it is, the Microsoft Call Quality PQX file. Now I had to manually put that in there. So where do you find that? Well, if we go back to our template file that we downloaded, it's right there. Okay, Microsoft Call Quality PQX. I can actually, it might be in one other place. I remember seeing it the other day. I was I, I had to go actually look for it. So I just double check that it was where I wanted it to be. No, so I guess that was where it was. Not in the auto ten. OK. So you'll take that, you'll copy that into that folder. And what that allows is for you to then select that as a data source in Power BI. Now, you'll notice I've called this Mintop Teams raw data. Um, this particular report is a little bit different, and I'll explain why in just a minute. OK, but you can save your reports once you've got them open. All right, but since I have this one and it's generic, I'm going to go with this. So this document tells us once we've done that, and of course, if there's if if it was a .mes file, then you would use this connected, but it wasn't. It was a PQX. We were able to copy it right in. Then it shows you go to Get Data, Online Services, Microsoft Qual Quality. Okay, um, and that's really the most important part of this document. Um, it does talk about how to build queries, so you can read through it if you want. Um, but that's really what I wanted to show you there. So what you do is there's two things here. Go to get data, right? And we're going to go. You don't see online services here. It, it, Power BI has changed just a little bit. So what you can do is go to more. Then you'll see online services, or you could simply search, right? You could do all and then search, right? So if we wanted to search for Teams, we oh look at that. 
So we've got Microsoft Teams personal analytics. Wow, how about that? So I'm logged in as Scott Rendell. If I select this, I'll be able to grab my personal analytics, right, which come from Office 365, which, and by the way, happens to be what I pulled here, but that's not what I wanted to show you just yet. All right, so let's go, let's call it um, call. There we go. So there's our call quality. Now that won't be there until you populate that, that folder, that custom connector folder. Once you do that, then you'll have access to this call quality information. All right, now I'm not gonna connect that because I've already set up all this stuff for you. But if I did, it would then reach out to Office 365 using the login credentials that I have for my Power BI desktop. And then it would start to grab the information. Now, this is a raw data dump. So when you do that personal analytics, there are no pre-built um, uh, pre displays over here because I didn't actually use a template. I just went and saw that and was able to grab raw data. So all of this data over here, recognize some of this? This all came, this looks very much like the, the dimensions we had in CQD. But luckily for us, it ties my user account to it. So now I can build my own report. So let's do a, um, uh, let's do payload description. Let's see what happens. So when I do payload description, it will populate because there is a default chart selected over here. Right, that's probably not a good one. Let's uncheck that. Let's go with. Um, let's find one here. Audio stream count. Oh, didn't like that one either, huh? Hmm, odd. I did have some of this information the other day. Anyway, so you can build your own. You can build your own Power BI dashboard because it gives you the raw data when you go into that that personal query. All right, that's that's really what I wanted to show you. So just to recap, it's get data, more online services, and you know we can scroll down to Microsoft here. That's why it's just easier to search for it. Yeah. So Microsoft Team Personal Analytics. All right, or the CQD data. So we type in call and you can grab that. Now, once you've got this, right, then um, Power BI Desktop has the ability to grab it. All right, you don't have to then go and pull these individually. Right, so for example, um, you don't have to go and pull the QER data manually by opening that. What you can do is you can simply double click on the template. All right, now that I've, now that I've established that, that data connection, you can double click on this template. It will open up Power BI a new window. It does take a minute, right? All right, so now it's telling us it's pulling it from multiple sources. So it's pulling it from CQD and our and our other analytic uh, op, other areas within Office 365. So we'll just click okay there. Getting CQD data, it's getting QER data. And because this is a template, it's going to populate with all the different charts. So again, from our CQD data, there's all of our metrics. Okay, and we've built some, some things in here for you to explain 
what what you're looking at, right? Audio health, media setup, media reliability, right? Here's our definitions page. You can do a search, right? Our top 10 networks. So it's now it's starting to drill into the reports that that were canned. I highly recommend you use these or download them at least and start going through them. This will give you a baseline so that you can better drill down into what's going on. And a lot of people like Power BI. So these will allow you to collect and save um, executive briefing reports, right? Hey, look at our network. Look at how this goes, right? And of course, this is small, right? We're only at 42%. So what we can do is collapse these, right? So now we got a better look at the report and then we can even zoom in because it's kind of small. Right, and then scroll around. There's our media drop by user report. Right, and pretty much I only have two, I only have the two uh, licensed users in my tenant. All right, but all of these reports come from our QER, quality of experience report. All right, so we don't need that one because I already have it up. Um, so we're going to close this, but that's how you would you would get that information. I don't need to save this one, but I do have other ones here. So that was our QER. Ooh, come on. All right, we'll do it this way. There we go. So, and there's the team's raw data that we had earlier. All right, let's find a different one. So, team's usage. So, again, I collapsed the fields. Here's our team's usage information, again, coming out of my tenant, uh, my personal tenant. So, just the, the little bit of, um, of information that I was able to populate. So, conferences and Video calls, actually, oh wow, it pulled the video call from today. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so just lots of canned information, right? Our minutes tunnel summary, audio minutes, all right, region details. So in this case, my my my. So this map is really cool. It would show you where the where the um, information. Or where the user is located at. That's pretty cool. But this one, this one is um, locked down right now by security, and I just didn't update it. So lots of different information in here for you to grab. All right. And then of course we've got that's what was that? That was Teams usage. We've got um, MTR, so Microsoft Teams rooms. That's a template that you could click on and it will build these reports. So MTR, this is the start page for that. So a lot of work went into these and explaining how and what you're looking at here. So we've got MTROW right on Windows and MTROA on Android reports. So we've got, here's our Windows report, our overview. Again, because I don't have any of mine fired up, there's not gonna be any information here. All right, but here's our um, Windows network for MTR, right? Then we get into our Android report, right? Our Android network, our device health, right? And then our device details. So all of that comes in these pre-canned reports, all right, that you can get off of this website, okay? And it talks about what these are, all right? Gives you an idea of Again, what you're looking at now. Um, the one last thing I wanted to talk about since I have just a couple of minutes left is. Graph. Let's see if I can find that. One moment. There it is. OK. So these links here. Talk about. The APIs that you can get from graph. To pull. Information. From Office 365. 
OK, and I pasted those in there for you. OK, so um, for those of you that want to create your own reporting, you can pull those metrics and you can pull um, near real time data using the graph APIs and webhooks. OK, so that allows you and of course you can also download the SDKs for that. Um, these two sites will give you the information you need to start pulling real time or near real time information out of Office 365 for your customers, right? So this is where you can build these offerings working with the graph APIs, right? So that was the final thing I wanted to, to show you today is when you're trying to pull these analytic and troubleshooting pieces of data, graph is probably gonna be your best bet from a real time standpoint where you're gonna wanna use the Power BI or CQD to pull the historical stuff. And I recommend you you train your customers on the historical stuff, right? They don't necessarily need to drill down into the woods, sorry, into the weeds on their reports, but they should know that, hey, overall, our trends are good, or overall, hey, we're seeing a problem and possibly in this building or this particular subnet. And so that's what all this information does. And there is a ton of information there. Now, that said, we have a number of partners that are already have already built this stuff or already using it and are looking for other partners to co-sell or to partner up with, um, you know, to to uh, so that you guys can sell and maybe make some money without having to necessarily do the heavy lifting. So there's plenty of room for you guys to customize and create offers around this kind of stuff. But if you'd rather just work with somebody that's already done it, you have that opportunity as well.